additions or public comment? All right, hearing none. Yep, call uh, the East Mount Police Select Board to order at 7 o'clock. Addition Any to uh, additions to the agenda? Yeah, I'd like to talk about COVID preparations and uh, management at the town office. Okay. We'll put that down. Um, can you need to pass that? Would you like one? Ah, uh, sure. Just throw one Larry, can you get them a pen, please? <laughs> Anybody else need a pen or a writing utensil, pencil? I apologize, I just got out of the tea field. That's all right. Covered, oh, in, covered in grease. I got a such thing. Okay, move forward. Okay, first agenda item is a financial review of the past fiscal year. So in your bundle, page two is the fire, actual fire budget versus fire. Um, hey, Toby. Yep. Yeah. You got another one of those? Uh, Paul, can you give that to him? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's all the documents I sent out to everybody. So <laughs> Thanks. If you looked at anything before you came to the meeting, this is all going to be old. Uh, anyway. So, uh, oh, yeah. income wise, we brought in the two payments from Dallas and East Montpelier for fire. Total expense was 190000 so we essentially chose a surplus of 4275 The one thing that um, didn't get into this particular expense year was the hose testing because the hose testing company canceled on us a couple of times. They did just arrive on Friday and we did do the hose testing so essentially we did spend that line item. I don't have the exact bill yet but, it, but we had the line item of $3,400. So if you take that out of the four two seventy five, essentially at the end of the year, we're going to end up with eight hundred and seventy five dollars left over of the, of the of the budget. Any questions on that? So that that um, bill though, that's going to go towards last year's. Comes well, out year's so so goal. essentially, if it had fallen before June 30th, it right. might have been there because it was in the, this year's, yeah. this past year's budget, but right. it didn't. So because we're on a cash basis, yeah, we're going to show that as a as a, a, a surplus this year, yeah, and a deficit next yeah, yeah. year. Just yeah. because, but I'm just trying to tell you that yeah. in reality, this is what we essentially right. we came, we came out within 875 dollars of our budget. Yeah, yeah. you could have pre-spent the money. Though. For the end of the year, I don't think you can. Yeah, you can. You can allocate. Well, we can, but we we had no yeah. idea that they were even. Oh, going oh, home, we didn't, so. didn't even know. Yeah, they you know they were having COVID issues as well as everybody else, and they were behind. And yeah, they yeah. only came to us because they had a cancellation. So it could have been in, it could have been six months from now. So sure, it, it was. Uh, so that's how we ended up um, in yeah. dark. So pretty much right on the money. Yeah, yeah. nice job. Um. And in the, if you look on page three, or actually the bottom of page, of page two, uh, capital expense equipment, 26,000, that's the um, payments on the power cots in the uh, defibrillators. The power, uh, the power what? Power cots. Oh yeah, okay. So essentially that's where that comes out of. And then on the next page, the 60,000 on expense trucks, that's the two um, payments on rescue two and rescue three. So that's an annual expense until those loans are paid off. So essentially we're looking at $86,000 of capital expenditures each year. Just to point that out. And you took that out of your... It comes Cap out of the capital account. Capital, that's what I thought. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's why it's not in the budget. It's so, separate. Okay. It's in the capital expenditures. Right. And the capital revenue comes in on the ambulance side, so we can look at that when we get to the ambulance. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on fire? Okay, page four. When you say page numbers, are you talking oh, about the, the, the top? The big okay. corner, right? okay. sorry. 
these are multiple documents and they each have their own. Okay. That's why I put big numbers up. Okay. Okay. Everybody can see the big numbers? You keep seeing page one. <laughs> I you can see two. the big numbers. Thank the big you. numbers. Can you see yeah, the big yeah. numbers? I see the big numbers. It's pretty explanatory. There we go. Okay. Well, self explanatory. Yeah, Carl was having an issue. Yeah, yeah I get it. Okay. Um, so on the um, income side of the ambulance, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you haven't seen before. Um, there is a grant for expenses, and that was a grant from the state to pay for COVID-related supplies. That came as part of the COVID um, fundings that we didn't expect. The state also gave us hazard pay for EMTs that actually worked during um, the period of time that we're out in the field dealing with COVID. And um, the 15000 is the transfer from contingency that we put in the budget for you, and that's where that showed up. The one thing you should note is the Marshfield total is one payment extra. They paid their FY22 first payment before um, July 1st, and we deposited, we should have held off on it, but it got deposited before. So essentially there'll be an extra 10,000, uh, 927 in this year's income, which, should, which essentially we'll have to take out at the end. So if you go to the bottom of the page where it says ordinary income, it shows a, a surplus of $11,268. If you subtract the 10927 it comes out to $341 in excess. So essentially, again, we sort of hit the number of debt on. So you didn't want to hold off on depositing that? Um, it came in and, and our treasurer didn't know. It's oh, so okay. It just was a timing thing. We, you know. Yeah. When it came, we we don't like to have checks sitting around in the firehouse. So essentially, she didn't understand that it was the first payment for the next year. And just and again, because we're a cash business, it shows up here. I, I could, see. You know, I can't really take it out because it was right. the date it comes in is when it has to be um, recorded. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you look down to ambulance revenue, you'll see that we brought in over $164,000 of um, revenue from the ambulance billing. Toby, just point me to where that number is. Um, it's about three quarters of the way down. Right. So the ambulance insurance revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the other thing that, that happened this year, we also got a contract from the state of Vermont to be vaccinators around the state and at, at, at vaccin vaccination clinics. The contract, the total contract is up for $100,000. Just for, just for here? For no, for us to be vaccinators, for us to provide members and, and EMTs to provide vaccinations. So the, the, the grand total is, is at 100000 we have not spent that yet, but that's the limit of the contract. So right now we've probably sent close to forty to fifty thousand dollars paying people to go out and, and be crew members on vaccination mm -hmm. clinics. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna continue doing that. We have three more coming up when school starts. Um, they're paying it a, a really nice, sweet fifty dollars an hour for people to do this because they want people to be out there. Mm -hmm. So if you look down at the bottom, the, la the bottom of the page it says COVID vaccination contract. So we we had brought in fifteen thousand. We had spent over thirty thousand to pay for those salaries. Um, so it's a, it's a negative balance, but um, we just received a check for thirty thousand. So we're actually in the positive now. I'm just not going to show because. It, it again jumps over the the fiscal year line. How much does the department keep for administering that? Well, we we get um, four hundred dollars a week to administer it, and we also get two hundred dollars every time they call us to staff it, and we have to organize a, a staffing. So essentially, it's covering our overhead um, for what we're doing. And, um, Ty, Ty and I are Ty and I, and then we have a staffer that's doing the the. Um, calling out people and organizing the deliveries. So, so how will that show up? Uh, I'm just trying to think how you will do that. It's right here. It's in it's in No, the hundred so the okay the contract is for a hundred thousand. So it's that's the maximum that's limit. Maximum. It's, okay. it's, it's an up to one hundred thousand and we can just spend it until until it's they, gone. They say we don't need you anymore. Okay. If we get to a hundred thousand they'll come in and give us another contract. What's 
can we go back up ambulance insurance expenses what is this what is unbudgeted ambulance billing paramedic what, are, should, what are those line items well denise you should know we've been doing that for well maybe years. you could just remind me yeah those are the paramedic intercept costs okay and the billing when we when we have the uh, barry city um, clerk bill it's Thank you, Toby. Yep. We also we have some we people who are newer to the process in Denise here. Yep. Yep. Uh, and those two items are paid from the ambulance collections. They are not budget items. Yeah, that, that's pre-distribution. So essentially, we pay that from non-taxpayer monies. Uh, okay, so page seven and eight are the eight, eight and nine, sorry. Okay. So page seven is uh, January to June 2021, July to December 2020. Number seven. They're still looking. <laughs> Uh, so, over 650 total calls all year, and it breaks it down by town. Any, any thoughts, any concerns? You guys had much action with um, like brush fires? Just we did some early on, but we try to keep it fairly regulated in our towns for permit wise and everything so that yeah. we've been able to limit that. Yeah. Do you see that as a big a growing issue, you know, with this contamination line? We do. I do. Yeah. yeah, with the drives, it's been, even with as much rain as we have, it's still really dry, you know, down in the depths of the soils. What happens when you get out in the woods is all the ground fodder and everything, and you get ground fires down in those, they'll start to burn underground because there's so much density and just the fluff of the leaf fodder and the pine needles. Mm -hmm. Spontaneous. Could be lightning strikes, could be somebody's out, you know, sets mm -hmm. the campfire, doesn't put it out. Yeah. Trojan Pond, you know, they're open burning over there all the time, dragging furniture out there, burning it, leaving Who is? over at Trojan Pond over here. Coburn Road. You know, we got to do something about the parking over there. That is a nightmare. I'm over there a lot because I feels over there. It is a nightmare. Yeah. You cannot drive through there. If you had an emergency, you had to get through there, you could be in curtain. Yeah. There's oh. cars to park right in the middle of the road. It's a nightmare. What, what is this place? Coburn Pond. I know. Along Coburn Road. People go swimming there and there's no park. Well, then we, the road. Uh, well, then we knew someone who could change traffic ordinances. Good time. There's a group of yeah, five guys. Yeah, but you have to, it's not a town road. property. No, but the road's a town road. It is a town road. Right. But yeah. how are you going to let people park? You have to get a hold of uh, VTrans. They own it. They own the property. So well, they, they're the ones that would have to allow us to move those stones and, and make the parking better. That's a nightmare, I'll tell you that right now. Anyway. Yep, um, so page eight and nine are actually the uh, ambulance transports and non-transports. Mm -hmm. um, almost 500 emergency calls, uh, part of our 650 total for the year. Uh, more than usual? No, we're used, well, I think we're good at 600 some years. Yeah, I was just wondering if COVID kind of added more people. Um, I think it subtracted people because no one wanted to go right. to the hospital. And if they'd stay yeah. home and mm -hmm. if their ankle hurt, they wouldn't call the ambulance because they didn't want to be exposed to the place where everyone who had COVID was being taken to. Yeah, that's kind of what I had heard. Yeah, um, I, I think that... But that's changed. That's the other thing now. It yeah, everybody, everybody's ready to go back to the hospital. We're, we're going, we're, we're busy. Yeah. We're out pretty much every day, several times a day, most of the time. Um, any, anything else on questions on transports, non-transports? 
you know, I, I was just mentioning stuff. There might be a, an angle around that Coburn Road if you're worried about safety on that. And I'm wondering if, if you could use use a, the mini park and ride program at B-Trans to create one there. And that would actually create a park and it, and it might be something to look into, you know, mm -hmm. to see if that. Those are like real, there's this gravel roads and they pay for gravel lot, they pay for it. Yeah. Going going back to the numbers, Toby, what's the what's the relationship between the number of calls and the number of transports? Is there are do, are some of the calls transports? So yeah. page eight and nine are transports or non transports in all the, the, the page that looks like this. Different different than the dual column or if you go to this one, this one's only Transport calls and non-transport. Page eight and nine are just transports, and so it's Hard it's only me. ambulance. No, it has it. It's, have it's only ambulance, and the other is the total of everything we do. So with all the other fire and other stuff, there's another hundred. It says no and yes. The no's are non-transports, but they still require a intervention that the ambulance responds and has patient contact with them. Paperwork is done. Maybe response to the house for lift assist. Um, some diabetic emergencies, we may give them medications. They stay behind, sign off, release. I, I got that. I'm only. I'm wondering whether I understand. So, so, number of transports and number of non transport. These are mutually exclusive by towns, right? But so, is is there a, are these are the transports and non transports a subset of the number of calls? Yes. Okay, that's my question. Um, and you have a page six. That's the collection rate. Um, and should we, yeah, should, that one, Bruce, the one you just put by. It should look like this, a horizontal. Page six. So we actually collected more than we built. And I think that has to do with monies coming in at the beginning of the year that were from the year before. The total this is, I don't think it ever matches up. Right. But the, the collection amount of 162 is pretty close to the 164. Part of the reason they differ is that the billing clerk doesn't always get up to date to the last day of the month um, for her records to bill for um, ambulance calls. And that's still being done by? This is done by very simple. Very simple. Right. So essentially, we billed out $225,000 and collected one hundred and sixty-two. Yeah. About that Medicare. Yeah, so we, down, we took $90,000 hit right. from the Medicare Medicaid adjustments. Yep. So if, if, they, if, they paid a, if they paid a fair rate, mm -hmm. we would have brought in $200,000 plus. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is just how we have to do it. You can see that Medicaid percentage was 38, 39%, and Medicaid was 12%. So that's where we get nicked. Yeah, from yeah. Problem across the board. Right. At doctor's offices and everywhere. Yeah. Um, and that's the financials. And the runs. So, Chief, you get COVID updates? Any other questions on the financials before we move on? We may want a minute to look at them and process them. Okay. Uh, COVID updates for us. Our current status is we're still in semi-lockdown mode, we never really left that. We limited the room capacities to here to 14, but we're probably not far from going back to um, limiting no public access, you know, with things the way they're changing and how rapidly they're moving. As I'm sure you guys are starting to look at, as Carl's question was, what does the towns do? Mm -hmm. So in order to keep ourselves protected and everything, we still have supply and inventory that we were able to amass during the rest of the previous spring year. Um, that we'll have supplies going forward that we need, but we're starting to ramp up our precautions. We've always kind of kept a baseline in place, but the hospitals are starting to slowly lock down more and more, and I think it, we're going to be not far from back to where we were pretty quick. Yeah, so, 
Yeah, so you, you maybe have other sources of information that, you know, isn't in the news or whatever. I know Washington, five counties now that are red. Washington County being most, most recently added. Yeah, we, we see the same reports you guys can have access to. We may just see them a little quicker. Yeah. I wonder if the governor will reinstitute the state of emergency. I know I said he's not going to, but... Yeah, I think at this point they're not, but I don't know if we can't speak to him. Yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. <coughs> so that's kind of our current status and our future status going forward. Um, as far as EMFD updates, there are special operations UTV. We purchased a UTV this past year, or well, it's not the past year, this year, this spring. Said, tell us what um, UTV is. It's a side-by-side -side utility vehicle with tracks on it. We can sh pull it out of the trailer if people want to see it. It's out in the trailer, uh, designed for forestry and off-road rescue. We've already used it this year for both, um, going all the way as far as Northfield for forest fire at a structure fire that we were there for as well. Um, off-road rescue, we've been on off-road trail over, rescued a woman out of the woods up on the Long Meadow Road between there and Worcester, ended up going out the Worcester side. Um, but this year, in the increase in, you know, trail rescues and things, we've been working diligently on upgrading our trail maps for all of Central Mount area. And just between the four towns we cover in the ambulance, we have at least several hundred miles of noted trails, let alone all the trails that aren't noted. So does that have a place where you can put somebody on a stretcher? It does. And it, yeah, and it has a pump mounted on it as well. Oh. Um, has a hose reel for forestry hose and things. So how do you, so you have it on a trailer, so you, you don't know ahead of time if you're going to need to take it with you or? You we have certain criteria in place that we would take it and that whether we use it or not, that would be deter determined once we're on site. But you know, we're carrying chainsaws and things where we need to, if we, we'll make our own trail through the woods as we need to to get through if we can't fit the trail. I was gonna ask how wide it is. It's uh, just under seven feet, and it's 15 feet long. Weighs about 2,000 pounds. Yeah, there are a lot of town trails that are too narrow for a vehicle like that. Yeah, we have ways to make it through. Uh-huh. Or around, alternate, just to make it around, you know. But that's a huge asset when you start to bring somebody off a mountain or um, out of the trails and things, and you have to carry them in the time and the manpower required to do well, it. I'm say it's, probably it's a time-saving piece of equipment. Well, if you had yeah, to so do it get somebody out a lot faster, too. Mm -hmm. You can. And if you had to do it with manpower, you'd need six people where you might only need one in the UTV. Mm -hmm. So staffing issues would be a, a, a great advantage. Makes sense. Would you send one person out on a pole? No, no. Oh, six, people to, six people to carry the stokes. To carry the, carry the basket. Yeah. When we did the Worcester Mountain Rescue last year, it was 50 of us. On Spruce Mountain, we were probably 35. And we hoisted her with a helicopter. So it's a needed investment. This one with, with the tracks will get us, we can go year round with it through the snow and everything. Was that the capital budget? I don't remember seeing this before. It's not. We used part of the um, monies we brought in from Hazmat, and then we took some from the uh, the capital, the under the 20000 limit that we could spend. Mm -hmm. But a, a good portion of it came from monies that we had, that we've raised from Hazmat calls and other buildings that we brought in through donations. Okay. We also have, Larry's going to be working on additional campaigning for capital monies with, towards that or other supplies we need with it. Mm -hmm. Can you use any COVID money for that? I mean, are you, are you, can you get any of the ARPA money? I, I don't know the specific answer to that. We can't use the COVID money we currently have because it's specifically designated for staffing purposes for vaccination clinics. Third rider program, uh, we've put three people through the third rider. So we've got some people that are coming in to uh, volunteer through that and then hopefully some are starting to transition into regular staffing members. And then we brought in a couple of new members. It seems like sometimes the flow in is keeping the flow out equal. Um, sometimes we gain for a while, so it's a constant process working slowly. But, mm -hmm. uh, Can you tell about what happens with the third rider program? 
Uh, they come in and they run regular shifts to work with the ambulance crew and they've got to spend a minimum of 40 hours of shift time getting qualified on the ambulances and the other equipment usage and then they um, go through a qualifying review of whether or not they're ready to transition over. These may be brand new EMTs that have come out of class just recently without experience and then we may run them longer depending on the student and things that are in that program before we do transition levels. Do you get students from Vermont Tech? No. Wow. In terms of like their fire program, yeah. Yeah. they're not even doing that anymore. Oh, they're not? Okay. We have one one of our third riders, she came in, she's um, headed to paramedic school there. But, yeah. yeah, VTC? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of it for that. Any other questions about EMFD and what we're doing? Do you guys have, going back to the trails work, trails program, do you have relationships with the mountain bike associations? Uh, Vermont Mountain Bike Association in Mamba? I believe where we have their trails, um, their trail maps are what they use. We don't always get the notifications. We try to keep up with that. Sometimes there's bike rides that come into town and go around. There was one earlier this spring that we didn't get notified of. You know, you've got hundreds of bikers that are going through and riding around the town doing their different segmented races and things. Um, we kind of found out about it second hand. Which race are you talking about? That was, uh, was it back in May? Was it the Onion River? The yeah, Onion River did one in late May. There was, there was like different segments of it. There was a lot, there was like a... Yeah, they all had different segments. There was like a hundred yeah. mile one. There was a... But was they're, like three or four they're supposed years. to give us notice and they're, as part of the deal, they're supposed to notify you and the state police. Yeah. Uh, no, so we didn't receive any notification something we need to follow up. So yeah. Onion River probably did sponsor that one. Yeah, I think it was like the end of May. Does yeah. that seem right? Do you? Yeah. Back, yeah. To, back to trails. Do you ever um, reach out to the town trail committees to let them know? We did. We, so we've done extensive work with all the towns of okay. trying to put together all the maps we can and, you know, the private trails are the harder ones because they're not all mapped out. They mm -hmm. may be posted. Um, we had the gentleman that died right at the trailhead on Center Road. You, you know, fortunately, he was out near the edge where he could have easily been in the woods, and somebody had, else walking had come up to him. Yeah. Um, but he was he wasn't too far into the woods, and the game warden was there to assist pretty quickly. But yeah, so the hard part we find is that people don't know. You know, there's so many people coming into town that don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. That they, you know, so for them to give bench markers or where they park, they don't always know that. So sometimes the only way, like the one that went over from uh, long, end of Long Meadow Road and came in on the end of um, the Kenning Road, the Kenning Road, Keating Road in Worcester. Worcester. Um, we had the state police with us, and they could ping the cell phone out in the woods, but the, they had parked on the Long Meadow end, but they were actually closer to the Kidding Road side of where they were, but they didn't know that. Yeah, and if they're from out of state or even, right. uh, even local, you might not know. So we went in, so we went in Long Meadow, we went out Kidding because it was a better access out and it mm -hmm. was a shorter route out. Yeah, because I mean, with cell reception the way it is, I don't know how good it is for you know, to call 911. Right. Yeah, there's not always cell coverage, but again, it's just people need to know where they are. They need to notify somebody where they're going. Right. So if they don't That's show they back can. up, somebody knows they're missing. Yeah. Well, I did a lot of people on trails in the East Mount area has a ton of trails. You know, just private trails that may connect through somebody's back fields and woods. And they may be mountain bike trails that aren't really necessarily open to everybody. They're mm -hmm. open to select groups of friends and things like that. They come in and use them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we're looking for like on those, you know, we may look for access points that um, we know there was one on Horn of the Moon Road a few years ago, but we ended up cutting across through the fields and cutting into the middle of the trail system instead of following back all the way out the trail we went in because it was a lot easier access. And we could get there with a UTV almost all the way in. Hmm. 
So what sort of rules do you operate under in situations like that? In terms of access to land? Under the statutes, we can access as we need to. Mm -hmm. um, we try not to damage more than necessary. Mm -hmm. But under emergency statutes, we can access. Except for CIA self safe houses. <laughs> you know, we have the authority to, to commandeer vehicles if we needed to, slow bills or whatever. Uh -huh. um, we've done that on occasion where we've needed to, you know, people have allowed us usage or whatever. We don't just go to the, we take them. Uh -huh. so. okay. yeah. Anything else before we move into the last one? So the last one is, a, I guess, the biggest one. Um, in a local agreement, our current status is that back in March 30th of 2021, um, Callis sent a letter to the Seth Gardner Chair of East Fair and Toby Collins, President of East Fair Fire Callis Select Board, or Seth Gardner Select Board member, um, looking to break the contract for the uh, interlocal agreement that's been in place for 11 years and then wanted to, um, at the bottom of it said, look forward to discussing, meeting with you over the next six months to discuss the items of a new agreement. And then we'll be reaching out to you shortly to develop a schedule of meetings for these discussions. So we haven't been to any official meetings. Um, so I guess it would be helpful for us from the Cala side if you could give us kind of some insight as to the lead into this, where we're at with this, I think the, the lead in is we haven't <coughs> reviewed the agreements since we signed them. And we felt like it was our due diligence on behalf of our taxpayers to review the review the documents, see if they still made sense, and make some changes as, as noted that you've seen. I believe you've seen them, right? Yep. Um, so it, we're just trying to do our due diligence to make sure that we periodically review the documents, just like you would in your own personal life. You review documents. You wouldn't just keep signing off on something without saying, hey, I haven't looked at this in a, in a while. Um, and then also to, we know that the fire department budget, you know, that's inside the select board budget, and that people can, from the floor, question that budget amount. But we really feel like the fire department gets a lot of um, support and appreciation and I think people like to hear from the fire departments about what you're doing. Woodbury still does that every year. I mean they didn't last year because of COVID but and the budgets always pass. So I think it does, I think it's good for everybody involved, select boards, fire department, taxpayers to see up front what the budget's amounts are because for us the fire department budget is one of the hugest budgets that we part of our budget that we have between both fire departments so that's kind of how this came about and we proposed some language we smelled paleo reviewed it came back with some changes I mean I don't really it doesn't from I think from our perspective it doesn't seem like it's that much of a change So anyways, we, they came back with some changes. We said okay. Board voted on it to accept the proposed changes of East Montpelier Select Board and as far as we're concerned, we're good to go. Was there issues of concern to, to want to look at it after 11 years? It's been well, just because it's been 11 years. 11 years, 11 years is a long time. But I mean, is there issues that would have brought up the discussion and no. changes and in, in changing the proposal of moving budgets out of select board budgets it, it and things? It came up here. The, the first time that we were aware, because we hadn't looked at the contract um, in a while, it was actually in this room that we said, we, we, it occurred to us, oh, for transparency and, and because it's a, a fundamentally different item than the town budget, that we wanted to take the, fire, the East Montpelier Fire Department budget out and present it separately and Bruce was the one who said well you can't do that 
So in at that that's meeting, what, right. was it maybe I don't know six more than six months ago? Probably a year ago. It was more like a year ago because it was be it was too late. It was too late. It was too before COVID. It was too late right. for us to do it. So we made a note. Um, we've been. I guess the other thing that that I can add that Denise, you know, that Denise could have said is, we've been working over the past several years. There in a in a I guess in a different kind of way to sharpen the pencil on our own budget. We don't just look at the delta. We look at. It's a, we are, we've been doing a zero-based budget. What do we need to run this program? What did we use last year? What money are we not spending? And starting with every line item from a zero base, and it kind of put in front of us the fact that, oh, East Mount Player Firearms inside the town budget, Woodbury is outside, why is that? Um, and just wanting to create some greater transparency uh, and parallel, and it was, it was here that we realized we couldn't do that, and that kind of made us think, oh, what is in that contract? Let's right. go look at it. Let's read it. We haven't read it in 11 years. And then we realized also the other issue was the timing of, as a practical matter, when would we want to be looking at it so that we might actually be able to talk to you in a way that makes sequentially made sense for bringing the budget to the town. Because reviewing it in March, right after town meeting, that doesn't, from a board perspective that doesn't work out very well as far as timing goes because there's so much else that goes on right after town meeting and and you're right i forgot it is it was it happened here when we were told oh we can't do that and we're like okay well then i guess we better do our due diligence and go back and look at this and see if it still makes sense for callus so it's nothing nothing disparaging towards the fire department or east mount clear select or nothing it's just we decided we needed to do what we needed to do as a board in reviewing all budget items with a fine tooth comb. This is our due diligence, you know, it, like, it's, it does serve a couple of purposes, you know, like the state of Vermont, for instance, you know, sign a contract for more than four years, that's the max, you have to have the Secretary, the Secretary of Administration's per signature to go longer than that, not so you review it. For us, it does two things, it's not a matter of trust, it, it's a matter of keeping us familiar with it too is we have board members coming and going. Mm -hmm. Everybody's familiar with it. And then <clears throat> really kind of bringing that out of a fixed, a real intent with bringing that into the public discussion is one, it's, it's one of transparency. The fire departments get good support, you know that. We, this is a way to actually weld that out more. Anytime <coughs> you lock something out and don't let people you know, don't really give them a hand in, in establishing it, then you feed the potential for somebody to really, you know, use that argument that, oh, look, you're trying to force something on us we don't want. So it is an opportunity to really engage them. You always have people that do that, but you have a lot of people that will stand up and say, no, 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 we need to support this. Watch it through a lot of town meetings. So that's, that's our strategy, you know, with the <coughs> We support the service, obviously. It's a great, this wasn't about not trusting. Mm -hmm. you know, this is about our due diligence as board members, making sure we're reviewing, making sure we're familiar with it. And it also has the double duty of making all of us, East Montpelier and you know, all the participating towns, kind of sit, look at it ourselves and make sure it's correct. I mean, if we need to make changes in it, well, that's what we do. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't about lack <coughs> of support or any of that. It's more, Put it out there i think you will get more support from people at town meeting by being there explaining answering questions bringing a fire truck you know i think the more that they more people can see the fire departments both woodbury and east montpelier callus i think it's it's better it doesn't mean you have to obviously you know taking it out of the town package and presenting it separately doesn't mean that you have to be there. Right. It was, I think it's an opportunity. Well, well, I think we would have to be there because if you put the budget out on the floor and anybody has a disagreement with it, it's a threat to our ability to do our job because yeah, I'm not they, can, they can make changes to the, to the operating funds that you agreed to in December. And that's a threat to all of us here that operate this fire department. 
Well, and, and that could have happened anyways. Yeah. It, it, it could have, it could have happened yeah. anyways. Well, regardless. again, so if you, if, you, if you say that the fire department can come and report during the article on the budget for taxes, we can come and report, but again, it's built into the, the select board's decision making and, and understanding and essentially you've met with us three times a year to understand what we do. I'm going to go into the, in front of the town and say, uh, do you have two hours where I can explain what we do? Because it's not a simple budget. It's not just gas and oil and, and, and there's a lot of things going on. That if you put it in front of a group of people that all of a sudden decide they don't like what they're hearing, it's a risk to the fire department. And, and there's no safety valve that you've created in, in your change of the interlocal to take care of that. But as we said before, though, I mean, I, I hear you. I, I appreciate what you're saying. But it could have happened anyways because people could okay. pull pieces and, out and of under the exist under the existing interlocal without any changes, you can ask us to present during the presentation of the select board's budget, and people can either up or down it. It's fine, but if you put it out there like a target, it's going to in, 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 encourage people to take the shot. Well, I, would you, I would disagree with that. Before, I mean, I, the, before yeah. the contract, before this, it was always on the floor at town meeting, and it never got shot down. Mm. And it was, it was never $180,000. Well, and, I, and that's part of the transparency of people appreciating what it is the fire department does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think, I mean, Toby, you're right. You, it's a good, I, when I said you don't have to, I meant there's no requirement. It is an excellent idea for you guys to be there and answer the question. Right. Um, and it is parallel <coughs> to Woodbury. That is, that is, that is, and it, it's actually, until you're at our town meeting, it's impressive the support that, that both fire departments get. One is being voted separately, one is not. But the, 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 the support that people articulate and the no, stories that they tell are, are impressive and... and well, well, let me just point out that the operating budget for Woodbury is still within the select board's budget and anything that's on the floor is a capital purchase for a fire truck. It has nothing to do with the operations of the fire department in Woodbury. There's no requirement that Woodbury be inside the town's budget. I know, but that's where you've had it for years. It's because not been out on the board. It's not it's been a separate article. Because yours was. Because this one was that way. And this was by contract. Woodbury's was just by handshake, if you will. Understood, but I'm you're treating both departments identically, and now you're moving us both out on the floor. And, um, and Woodbury my isn't. sense from Woodbury is they're not happy with it either. And I'll just tell you that's my, I, I, I've talked to Chance, and when I'm going to That's not that that's not what he has said to me. That's, that's, not, that's not what he has said to the full entire Calus Select Board. That's that. not what he has said. So if he's telling you one thing and telling us another, then that's a problem. Yep. That, yeah, that is, that is, that is not what he said. So what does East Montpelier, how does East Montpelier weigh in on this? We're just going to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, we're not moving it out of our budget, our town budget, as a separate article. Um, I think that there, I think that we're making a fuss out of something that's really mm -hmm. not going to really matter. I think, I think it will get voted because my experience with budgets and lots of numbers, people don't really understand them. Uh -uh. They just get passed. Right. If, yeah. if but you'll have else. more discussion over a thousand dollar item yep. because it's happens. a simple concept. It's a thousand dollars. People grasp it, and they and they'll talk about that for two hours. Yep. <laughs> but when you talk them, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars are like, exactly. oh my god, let's pass it. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, we love the fire department. It'll pass. Yeah. So I'm not really too worried about it. I mean, I understand the concerns from the fire department, and if it doesn't work, then we can give notice ourselves and make things work better for the fire department. But so right now we're just like, well, we'll see how it works. But what about the idea of doing our due diligence and reviewing the contract every That's so many fine. years? I mean, yeah. I mean, you have if new members, we have new members. Yeah, it's just that I've been sense. on it so long that I wasn't feeling the need to review it. Carl's been on it for quite a while. 
Bruce and I were on it originally. Yeah. So we didn't really feel that need, and we we also explain it to new members in side conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. They'll ask us a question, and we answer. So it isn't like it's in the dark and no one knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you've got long-standing members on the East Montpelier Select Board that understand them very. Yeah. I mean, I do very, very thoroughly. Yeah. So well, we we weren't worried about anything in the agreement, but because you folks expressed some concern about getting the getting the fire department budget out of your town budget and voting on it separately, we thought that this is coming up pretty quickly, September 1st, mm -hmm. that we'll just try it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we amended the language that we did and sent you the copy because we need to move this along. Mm -hmm. I, if it does become a problem, then obviously mm -hmm. then we'll give notice and try to fix things. Right. But I really don't think it's going to be any, I anything. I don't think it'd be anything. I understand the concern, but yeah. I, don't, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I understand their concern, and I appreciate yeah. them expressing that. And as we said, it's not a matter of non-support or non-trust, none of that. It's doing our job as the town select board <clears throat> to be aware of the contracts that we have. We do the same thing. We have a contract with RB Tech. Every year, we have a meeting with RB Tech to go over the contract, to review town pieces of equipment. It's just, this, it's just the right thing to do. Well, I think that's where we thought we were in the contract that we were with the relationship we have in meeting three or four times a year. You know, we're going over and discussing all those items leading into this so we wouldn't be aware in question of whether this contract is good or not and why has it worked for 11 years, fine. I think our concerns, really, to put them on the table clearly, is that we're concerned if one, if it doesn't get voted through for whatever reason, we all believe there's a lot of support for the fire service, but if something happens, what happens? What is the ramifications of that in terms of how does that get picked up, right? What does East Montpelier do if they're voted through and approved and Callis doesn't vote it through? What, how do you fix that afterwards? Do you have to have a special vote in Callis? Mm -hmm. Has there been discussion on what that is? Because that's been nothing that's come to us to say, look, if in the moments of something was to happen and it didn't get approved, this is our plan going forward. We're going to either fund the difference or we're going to call for another vote or, you know, because again, we have budget timelines. We have staffing we have to worry about. Um, if there's no budget, there's no fire department. But that's not a unique concern. The schools, the schools have to deal with that, and school budgets do get voted down, and, and it, it's a it's a lot of work. Town budgets could get voted down. Those those it's, those concerns are valid, but they're not unique. Ty, it's very different. The schools can go borrow and bond money to move forward and continue on. We can't. What do you what so what uh, what I'm curious about is what outcome you expect from this conversation right now? I'm not looking for one tonight, okay. but I, I just want it to be our concerns on the table because mm -hmm. nobody's invited us to come to the meetings. Yeah, we, well, we, we understood the concern. I, I understand. Totally. totally. But we, asked, we had exactly we asked, the same conversation. Exactly. Yeah. What would what happens if 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 finally we're like not likely to happen. Right. If if it happens, then we're going to deal with it. Right. And then that's, that's just where I came from. That's where we're, yeah, I mean, that's where we're at. I just don't see it happen. I just, it's so unlikely. Yeah, I agree. So, I, I understand. I mean, it's like, oh, well, if they vote, you know, one third of your money's gone. What's going to happen? Well, he's my favorite. Oh, well, I might have to pick up some slack or something. And I think if you make the effort to go there to the town meeting and talk with folks and just yeah. be there, I think that goes a long way toward getting it approved. It and and okay. it's going to be the people who are interested are going to go to town meeting, and those right. are probably people who have benefited from fire service and EMS, so I think it's... Mm -hmm. I, I, I just don't see, I see such a, such a small chance of something getting voted down. I just don't see it. See, yeah. the problem is, is you, you present your budget, and we all kind of vote on it to give you the money before town meeting. Right, which we really, it's not... So that's, it's like... That was kind of the preliminary discussion and review, and if there was concerns about it, right, right, we it always in, it was set in line to go into yeah. the budgets, and it's like okay, yeah. we agree where we're at. We I know, but we don't, then, but we don't have the authority to approve that budget 
Only the voters do. You didn't need to because they would approve it at town meeting. If it's if it's really the basis of more presentation at town meeting, I mean, I'm sorry. Sometimes I just can't leave my job to go to town meeting. I just can't. You know, I I have to work. Mm -hmm. And if that's what it is, we'll make better effort to be there and have more solid presentations. If that's really the basis of it, and that would not fundamentally change at all how we currently do business. Yeah, but. The thing is, if, if it's a separate line item. If it's a separate line item, it does. But if yeah. it was the same exact way we do business, it's just more about more presentation on what we do. And then I, don't, the I don't think they were really worried about that, though. No. That's not what no. they're... I it wasn't their thrust in separating it from no, the budget. I mean, we've had the same concern from some the citizens of East Montpelier. They wanted to separate out the fire department budget from the town budget. Mm -hmm. And we've always been sort of resistant to it because it's hard to do that when you've already guaranteed sort of your money. Right, which we don't have the authority to do that, right? Well, yeah, but we have meetings with the fire right. department and they come up with a budget. Right, and we say, okay, well, we, we understand that budget and we will put that in the budget, but we don't have the authority as a board or you guys as a board to guarantee that money. That money is not guaranteed until it is voted on by the taxpayers. That's right. They, they can but we've come up with a budget, that's the thing. Right, right, right. And that's what our job is, is to come up with a budget and present it to the taxpayers, and then they get to say. And I, like I said, I don't, as you have said, I don't see it as a problem. No. It's never been a problem. So, for me it's an integrity, an integrity of the process. So, when we, when the town votes on the town budget, they are voting in, in, a, in a new world, you know, post this change. They are voting purely on the things that are within, squarely and only within town function. Running the town office, highway department, the highway department, um, the, you know, dog licensing function. I mean, it's, it's, it's purely, purely town function. And so as we got as we as we've done this work over the past several years to kind of get closer to understanding what is town function, what is slightly different, the all of the special articles, those are those are not town function, they are outside. This this was an anomaly in being something that is outside of pure town function and yet being baked inside the budget. I mean and the same thing with our we've taken our and separated out the um, sheriff patrol and made it its own item in the budget. It's not a, it's not a large amount, but it used to be buried in. I can't remember what it used to be buried in, but it used to be kind of buried in, just kind of town government. So That's we've been we've been taking a really hard look because times are hard, people's pocketbooks suffer, and we want to make sure that we present to them in as much detail and as clearly as possible where their tax dollars get spent. And I don't think anybody is going to argue their tax dollars being spent on fire and ambulance, because an anybody and everybody could need that at some time. Yeah, and these just historically have very good, I mean, these, these are services directly for the people. I mean, no, I have a bunch of time meeting after 10, 31 years with the town meetings and places, and I, you know, that, that doesn't worry me at all to support what it does. To me, I see this as an opportunity to actually build it. Instead of having it locked away where it doesn't even really get discussed much here, it's, it puts it in there. The, in the, and it might, well, probably, it's a long way. We're going to have somebody. We're going to have somebody that barks about numbers. But there will be a lot of people, uh, including us, that stand up for this. And we will point out, you know, if, any, if there's any serious resistance, you know, what the ramifications are for the town on that, too. But we will. We're advocates. We're not. We're not out to get the glory. But that's not the intent here. Mm -hmm. This is more about transparency and how to keep people engaged in it. And, you know, well, I would say I agree with Seth. Let's, we'll see how it goes. I think this is going to be a non-issue. I do too. I think it will be a net gain in the end. I think yeah. people will have a better appreciation and understanding of where their money goes and how valuable that money is by doing it. The way that Callis would like is going to do it. And on the other hand, in voting it up, which means a lot, you know, when they they are going to be participating and continue. Yeah. It won't be. I can add something from my perspective to what 
Seth said, uh, yeah. as he mentioned, we have had people in town who, over the years, have argued that uh, they would like to vote on this budget, fire department budget, separately from other things. And uh, we have had that discussion on the select board and have always so far come down on keeping it within the municipal budget. And we have, at this point, no, no plans to change that, uh, regardless of how this agreement is, is changed. Um, but uh, you know, if for some reason the voters should vote down the town budget, and you know, they could vote down the town budget, they could vote down if the fire department budget was separate from the town budget, they could, could vote that uh, down too. Either way, it would be by Australian ballot, the way things are set up in, in East Montpelier, everything over $25,000 gets voted down by, by Australian ballot. So then we would have to look at our conversations with you about what the fire department and ambulance service need for a budget and our agreement with Callis that we would uh, shoulder two-thirds of that and they would shoulder one-third of that and uh, if, uh, if the voters voted down the town budget well first of all we need to figure out okay do they think we were spending too much or too little in the town budget maybe there are services that they think we should be providing that we weren't putting in there and then well, and that's harder for us to figure out when we're doing it by Australian ballot than it is for them when they're having the discussions on the floor. And, and then we need to figure out, okay, well, to get this to pass, do we need to take money out of the fire department budget or do we take it out of the road budget? Uh, should we not be keeping our roads in such good condition or should we be paying our staff less or, or what do we need to do? But uh, we would be having that discussion fully, <coughs> fully conscious of uh, what we've heard from you guys and our obligations, according to the interlocal agreement with uh, with Callis, to pay for two thirds of your budget, and, and uh, that that would highly inform our discussions. Yeah, I mean the the, the payment amount doesn't go away. The two thirds, one third, that doesn't have change. And you know, if you look at Callis's budget, we have really worked really hard to even if it's a small amount of money like the Conservation Commission, that's its own separate item. And it lists under there all of the things that they have funding for. Same with the town hall, same with the town um, planning commission, same with the town clerk's office, general office, select board budget. We have broken things down so it's easier for people to digest. So this, this is part of this process. Mm -hmm. And those that the things that Denise just listed are all town function. Right, and they're all laid out just like that. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, what do you see as the next step? Because we've already voted on these changes for right. our select board. Right, so we have. I think we have some review to do. Again, I think characteristically we felt left out of the meetings along the way. You know, as you guys stated in your letter from back then, we were going to be reaching out to you and having regular meetings set up. And yeah, no, I'm, and then we apologize for that, but as yeah. you know, select board have been extremely busy with a lot of other, a lot of stuff. I can't, I can't even mm -hmm. tell you how much stuff. And then there was all the stuff with the changes in the COVID. I mean, when we initially did this, we were still doing, we were still in COVID state of emergency. Which we could do Zoom meetings. Right? I think the thing is, is that we, we feel that this should have some importance to go to a meeting. You know, if we're going to talk about it, we're talking about such a, you know, this is a pretty important document that is how we operate and function and how the three parties are joined together. Well, I think... Um, and I think we're seeing that kind of fall apart some well, and not all three parties. With that, it's just we should just, why don't we set a time? We'll annually calendar these so that we just have those on a meeting. We lock them in. That, I think that's fair. That is fair feedback. Yeah. yeah. That is, that's, that's that is fair. fair feedback. So yeah, it is fair. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we and like I said, we apologize. We just get overloaded. We move with, on. Well, that's kind of why we signed it items. at our meeting when we went over the language. We're like, well, let's change the language and we'll sign it now so we can get it over to you guys, take yeah. a look at it, and get it to you so you can discuss it because we, we knew the timeline was getting tight. Right. So, well, and that's something in the proposal. You guys have shortened the timeline, right, to three months from six months. Yeah. So if we couldn't do it this time in six months, how do we ensure we do it the next time in three months? Well, I think we, that's one of the things we have concerns over. 
we're, mm-hmm. we've got to take this back and review it. We're probably not going to have it done by September 1st, which means we have no interlocal agreement in place. What do we do in the interim? You know, our proposal is we have a, a draft interim contract is so simple to extend it for up to three months to allow it to go through further discussion and negotiations. Um, well, I can see, I, I, can, I can see what you're saying. Um, but as I said, just getting that letter out to you at the end of March, with everything happening right after town meeting, was was hard for us. So I don't know if we should be looking at a different amount of timing. Um, and that's you know that's a fair comment on your part. I think it has to be, especially to the parties that call it out. <laughs> You've got to be diligent about this and follow through on it. It can't be, oh, we didn't have time, we didn't get there. We're all busy. Well, look, and I think, it's, I, I think it's important that we, we look at that in a timely manner. Because our concern, again, is just as we look at the comparison of what we just did in this evolution, we can't do in the evolution that's being proposed. right? Because we couldn't accomplish it now. What's suddenly going to be able to say, we can do this in half the time and get it done the next time? If we say we're really busy, what makes us less busy the next time that we're going to have more time to accelerate it twice as fast and actually get it accomplished on all three parties? I think it's, I'm, I'm going to, I hear your point. It is, to me, it, it doesn't mean we have to go back to six months. There's a, there's a number of ways to improve process. We are working a lot on, that's one of the things we, we do spend time on is how do we improve our processes and be more effective and efficient. And I would take this, this, um, Break, breakdown as an opportunity for us to improve process rather than to just go back to a longer timeline. We, you're right, we have to, we have to be better. Uh, we should have, when we pass that letter, we should have appointed one of us to be, you know, anybody but somebody to like take the next steps and keep this ball moving because we had created an ex- expectation that because we didn't do that, we didn't meet. But but I think the issue is real, and I and I, I just wouldn't. I don't like the solution you're proposing, but I recognize the issue and that it needs a solution. Well, I think if we do change it to three months, there has to be some meeting structure built into that contract agreement that there is a weekly meeting, or or a biweekly meeting, so that the joint meetings are actually scheduled and under under issue with the contract, and that you have to you have to show up. I mean, I think that would be an important part that needs to be in any change that you make to a shorter period of time for mm-hmm. for, re- for reopening the contract. I think you just have to set up a, some kind of um, parameters that you have to follow that are, that are in the contract, not just three months and woo-hoo, let's see what happens. Well, there wasn't anything in the contract now to, to well, do that I'm either. Just so that, that our experience, we've never had this happen before in a five-month notice is now two weeks with our fire department not having any any time at the table. I just don't think that's appropriate. And again, if you want to change the time period down to three months, then you have to put a structure in that everybody's held to. So how many, how long do you think it will take the fire department to meet and to I don't know. We have attorneys that we have to talk to. There's all kinds of things that we need to adjust. You know, we need to look at it as much as you guys have in five months. And we haven't had the time, because we haven't had a, a joint meeting where we understood what your proposals were and what you actually were concerned about. So could, could we agree tonight to extend the time by, I don't know, 60 days or 90 days, and with the understanding that the contract that's still in place stays in place for the next yeah. 90 days or something like that? Yeah. And we have a letter. We have a letter that we've got to take a quick, quick look at those before we make a decision on that. And you have just one for each town? One for each town. Okay. Yeah. They're the same. You can read it out loud if you want to file them. Okay. And they the same information. Okay. Okay. Uh, to Callis and East Montpelier Select Boards, Re Fire Department Service Agreements, Dear Ladies and Gentlemen, on March 30th, 2021, the Town of Calla Select Board formally notified the East Montpelier Volunteer Fire Department of its intention to terminate the emergency response services contract among the towns of Callas and East Montpelier 
and the East Montpelier Fire Department, Volunteer Fire Department, effective September 1st, 2021. To date, neither a replacement contract nor amendments to the existing contract have been agreed to. In light of the imminent termination of the emergency response services contract scheduled to occur on September 1st, 2021, and in order to continue providing emergency response services, the East Montpelier Volunteer Fire Department requests that the parties agree to an interim extension for up to three months to negotiate one or more contract amendments. What's the date of this letter? So, so one of the things that occurs to me listening to Carl read the letter, and it's 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 accurate, is there wasn't anything to there wasn't any other way to raise the issue except to notice a termination. Um, if that makes sense, going back to Denise's point about timing, th there's there's not a there nothing, wasn't a, a way in the current right. There's nothing in the current contract. You just have to notify right of your right. intention not to renew. We didn't. I don't think we ever used the word terminate. I think we said non-renewal. Yeah, not, not to renew the current contract, which is you know for the for anybody who ever watches this, this is very different than terminating. Right. We want to make changes to the contract, so the only option we had is to provide notice of a non-renewal. Um, that's that's a detail, but it, but if we're going to work, you know, tinker, then that's then you know some option for friendlier language because you know everybody wants to be in this relationship, but. Being able to re to discuss the relationship on friendlier terms is something we could put in the contract mm -hmm. while we're at it. I would be fine with 90 days, but we have to take it back to the board. That's just me talking. Well, what, we, have a, what, we have a quorum. Well, but we want to also be um, aware that 90 days from September 1 is pushing us up against our budget, our budget, <clears throat> and our so it absolutely must be done and that that kind of I, I would actually be more interested and that's December I would be more interested in 60 days so that you know we're really done by December 1 but well September 1st to for 90 days September October November that's so you're still coming up with December 1 mm -hmm. oh it, September, September October November it's three months yeah. Oh, you're right. The, September, yeah. the, it's the last mm -hmm. third, not the last quarter. Okay, right. yep, that's yeah. fine. Yep, that makes sense. So, just looking at the current contract and the proposals for changes, nothing is going to be done differently by either town or by the fire department uh, for three months after September 1st, either way. Well, we have to, we have to. I, I think we would have to agree to ex extend, extend, to extend right. the contract. Right, they're asking for three months. Right, yeah. I'm saying but that has if, to be if we agree to people. extend the current contract, or if we agree today to the changes that East Montpelier and Callis have voted in, either way, all the parties are going to do exactly the same thing mm -hmm. as they would in the other alternative between now and December 1st. Yeah, I'd like to think that would not be the case. <laughs> I would think we could move forward from the last five months to where we can get together and resolve this. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. These issues in the next three months. I, I, I don't mean to say that we I won't have discussions. Intent, I, hope, I hope that we will have those discussions. Well, I hope, hope there will be regular discussions. What I'm saying is that the changes that have been proposed by the towns affect what's done on town meeting day. Those decisions are made by the select boards in January. So between now and December 1st, there's no practical difference between how we operate. Well, not how we operate, but I think I think really the the elephant in the room, if you will, is the difference between whether those changes hold, or what really, what I'm imagining Ty isn't quite saying out loud is he's looking for any, a chance to influence the decision that the town council has already made. Right. What does that mean? What does it explain that? It, oh, it, she's uh, saying that well, the fire department is not. I think happy. I, don't I, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't understand a word you just said. Yeah, please explain that. Okay. So Carl's point is that nothing nothing that we have approved in Calus, and I guess that East Montpelier has approved as well, none, none of, as a practical matter, none of those changes take effect until, uh, until the new year because they're all around how we present our budget at this point 
and so that's that's really what Carl's saying. Right. And what I'm what I'm pointing out, and so in, in a way, Carl, you weren't saying this. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but in a way, we could say, so what difference does it make? You know, what does 90 difference make? Well, the difference is that what Kai is looking for, I believe. Without, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm looking for you to maybe confirm this. I want all of us to be clear about what we're doing here. What Ty's looking for is an opportunity to influence through the meetings that we didn't give you what we did so that maybe those changes are not what we end up doing by January 1. He's looking for a conversation, I think. He's looking for a conversation with a different outcome, I would imagine. But maybe, but maybe a conversation... Um, not totally about a different outcome but more that there's a, a plan to address our concerns versus just see how it goes right throw it on the wall and see if it sticks doesn't work really well for what we do for business well, one of the things that why i kind of question you on that uh, did it ever occur to the boards that maybe the fire department had changes that they wanted to put in uh and, and we never had that opportunity uh which you may not like you may like you don't know that because you don't because we're not there, we're not at that point. Well, it's actually not, it's not true that the fire department didn't have that opportunity. The fire department had the same opportunity we did to provide notice of changes that they wanted. Well, it sounds like we're going to have to make an extension. Yeah. 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 Either, either, <laughs> however <laughs> things come out, <coughs> we need to extend this 60 to 90 days under the same, I guess, operating agreement that we currently have. So we can either do that tonight because we do have a quorum, or we can bring it up on August, whatever, I think it's the 23rd, when we meet next. We want to have fire and ambulance services after September 1st, and we understand. Yeah. I understand that uh, it's a short time to have a conversation from your point of view. Mm -hmm. But then this gives them 90 more days. I understand that. Right? Yes, everyone yeah. 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 If, if we vote to accept it. So right. I'm, I'm going to be talking to my fellow select board members and I will be advocating to, to So we should that. have some breakout, right? I don't want to be sitting here in front of everybody having a council No, we could go into another room. Yeah. I think we should. And see if we can get this done tonight. Well, we'll take the UTV out. We'll drive you around in circles. I would, no, I want to drive you to the circles. Well, you had to finish the training class first. Yes, right. Safety first. Yeah. Is there All right, any, so you anything got else that you need to ask? So they're not like a Before you walk away, what is your process? Because you have to sign off on the extension, too. Right. So how would your process work? We know how both well, Ford's process works. How does yours work? We can approve that tonight. How? We have a board, we, we have a, we have a board quorum here that we can approve that. that this is, we can make the extension to go forward. This tonight. is the discussion we had before years ago. It's not on the agenda. Right. Yeah. And it's not on our agenda. Yeah, it's it's, agenda it's this kind of stuff that we were trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's this feels uncomfortable. So no, we, we can put it on our agenda. We can put it. Agenda. We can put it on our agenda. Which I think is the better way. The twenty third agenda, and that way we have the full board. And everybody's on. The, everybody knows what's going on. Yeah. And I, that's I what we're going to do. Gonna be a, we're going to put it on our agenda. For Who is going to draft the extension? I don't know. They were talking about lawyers. I don't know that we need a lawyer. I don't think we need a lawyer for the extension. Can't we, we just? Can't we just put it? Can't we just put it in our minutes? We don't need to get all, I don't see why we need to get that formal. It's just going to take up more time. Works for me. I know. So I think Bruce I just want to, Bruce might want to draft this issue. I don't see it. I kind of agree with Denise on this one. That's what I think, too. I think we should just do it. It's for 90 days. We, we, need exactly. we need to at least draft a motion that both boards, right. all three right. boards, vote on so that we're using the same language. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the challenge is what Bruce well, is saying is Eastwell Fair is not here in official capacity. Is that correct, Bruce? No, we're here in official capacity. We're not on our agenda to do this. We're not on our agenda. We can't just ask. It's not even introduced under other business. Right. 
It's nothing. You have a procedure you have to follow for the open meeting law, and part of it is having an agenda. Right. You, at the beginning of your meeting, you add or you delete from the agenda, but you don't do it in the middle of the meeting or at the end of the meeting. But we can easily do it August 23rd. Right. Yeah. We have plenty of time to warn. Right. We have time to warn it. We have time to draft a, a motion. And each board can draft their own motion. It doesn't have to be the same. Can as I, long as it gets to the same outcome. So obviously on this, we're going to have the time extension built into it. And the question I would have is, do you... We all have. Do we have to change the maximum funding amount too? I assume they. The maximum what? It's the it's the contract amount, right? We're running out of contract as of. Yeah. The end of, I mean, I write contracts all the time. I have to do that, so I'm just making sure we don't. No, do we have to build in that three month contract amount that we can. No. So that there's money. Because we have, we start <coughs> July first. We're operating under our new budget. Okay. And it's already been done. Okay, the it's budget's already, done, but the contract, yeah, the, right, the contract separate. accessing that money, that's correct. No, that doesn't have any. Okay. So I think I'm just thinking through my point about extending the contract, and and it comes down to this. We had, we had a very fixed timeline under the current contract to provide notice of our intent, let's not say terminate, but to... See, not, see changes by September 1. We did that. If we step away from that, how is it memorialized that our, our issues are still in discussion and we, we have preserved our rights because we stuck to the timeline that's in the current contract? Does that make sense? I know what you're trying. I know I get what you're. I get what you're trying to say, and I think that can all be done. I with, with a motion. Well, but everybody else has to agree. It can't just be our motion. Everyone at least has to agree that the current terms. We're only that we're, we're suspending. We're, we're, sus you have. You guys have to suspend something in the contract for our right to 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 re to continue the negotiation. Is preserved. I don't understand that at all. With, They're the, saying the, the that suggestion is to extend the contract as it's written for, for 90, a, a limited period of time for, for 90 months. days. Right, but the contract as it's written includes a very right. tight timeline through which we have to provide notice of our intent. But you did that. But we did that. We're just extend. We're just extending, in my mind, the whole thing. The, we're just extending so the time. I, let me days. stop this one, and I will send out something on Tuesday to all of you that will lay out a very simple extension that will preserve, say exactly what you're rights. saying. Yeah, just preserve our rights. And it'll be the same thing for everybody. Yeah, it doesn't Your seem board, like it should you, be that hard. It isn't. It won't be, but it it'll be on one piece of paper right. and I think be, we're trying to make this yeah. more complicated yeah. than it needs to be. Uh, it'll be a very short yeah. letter, trust me. <laughs> okay. No, that's good. Thank you. And it'll present short to shorten to the point, Bruce, like that. Do we want to set a time schedule, or what do people talk in the next three months? Or how do you, how do you get through this? What is the availabilities of select boards to meet jointly, meet separately? We'll come to each of you individually if you need to. I think it's whatever. easier. I think it's better to do it jointly if we can, so that we're sure. all hearing the yeah, same thing at the same time. I, I, I think that though, the ball's kind of in, in the fire department's court. Court. Yeah. So you're gonna have to come up with something. And give us a couple of options. We're good with well, balls. We, let's set, let's set a meeting. What's that? The balls <laughs> in our set, court? We're good with, with balls. Yeah, let's, okay. Let's set a meeting September, October, November. We're, let's put the dates and put them right into this agreement. Well, I just shouldn't do it with our line with our meetings. So so can I make another suggestion mm -hmm. to Callis? Yeah. If you sign the original that we created in July and we hand it to the fire department tonight, because you've already got authorization to Mm -hmm. We'll hand it to the fire department, and then they make a response to that, and then we start. Right. If there needs to be negotiation, then we start up, and we got to determine the process at that point. But again, it's not on the agenda. No, that part you've already done. All you're doing is physically signing it. Well, we you agreed, agreed to that on the we, ninth. Well, no, we agreed. We we on the ninth we talked about it, but we didn't do an official motion. But on the twenty sixth. We did, and I brought the minutes with me. On um, the 9th was just the other day, and that's when you made the official motion. 
It's the opposite, Denise. We yeah, talked you're right. about it on the 26th. The sixth, and yeah. then we made the motion on the 9th. Yeah. Yeah. And those minutes I didn't bring. Well, we can get yeah. to them if you want to. But the, you, need the the original, you could sign it tonight mm -hmm. and then hand it off to, to Ty and Toby, and mm -hmm. they can respond to it. But they'll respond, mm -hmm. but then what Ty was saying is you want to set up meetings. Yeah. But <laughs> we already have. But the trick is they get to respond to it. And then you right. figure out if you want to have it as joint meetings yeah. or one of you. You know what right. Sharon was saying earlier, do you want to have yeah, a, a designated negotiator, which is how we did it last time. And it still took us way too long. Yeah. We had a designated negotiator. I remember going to a lot of meetings. We did go to a lot of meetings. You might have been the designated negotiator. I don't think I was, though. You and I were. I was. Oh, okay. You were. Okay. And at that point, Toby was still on the select board, so he was the other <laughs> But we, once they respond, we will definitely get this thing done. I am, by yeah. the way, taking you totally at your word that what I just signed is what I think I signed. Yeah. <laughs> what did you yeah. sign? It is the thing you handed to me. The mortgage for her own. No, I that was for Denise to sign. There was well, only one all, slot for Catholics. We all know we're all, we're all signing it. We all like to sign things for us. They all signed it. Denise is just one member of the Because I just signed the, the original. Right. And now the original's been messed up with lots okay. of signatures. <laughs> yeah, this is the one Seth already signed. It's yeah. Yeah. It. It's better. All right. I don't need to sign it again. Will you somebody <laughs> scan and uh, email us a copy of that, please? Yep, we'll go copy it. Do you want me to copy it? No. Yes, well, no, please. So you guys have to sign it. Okay, we can do that. Well, you have to sign it. No, we wouldn't sign we it. No, 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 we're done. Yeah, we're done with you. Uh, okay. You can be done with yourself. Okay. We have still to continue our select board meetings. Okay. Sure. So Cal we have other business. Um, <laughs> so motion. the fire department will vacate this room and we'll pull out the UTV for anybody yeah. who wants to see it. And you guys okay, can... I need a motion from Cal's to adjourn. So I'm not on the Cal select board. Don't look at me. <laughs> and I'll second it. And the time is 823 and a half. Eight twenty-three and a half. Yeah, well, we like to be active.